and gentlemen good day and welcome to navneet education q3 fy24 conference call hosted by prabhudas leeladhar private limited as a reminder all participant line will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr janesh joshi from prabhudas leeladhar thank you and over to you sir uh yeah uh, good morning everyone uh, on behalf of uh, prabhudas leeladhar i welcome you all to the uh, cqfy24 earning call of uh, navneet education limited Uh, we have with us the uh, management represented by Mr. Sunil Gala, uh, who is the MD, uh, Mr. Kalpesh uh, Dedia, CFO, and Mr. Romi Mitri, who heads the investor relations uh, function. Uh, I would now like to hand over the call uh, to the management for uh, opening remarks. Uh, over to you, Sunil Bai. Thank you very much, Jinan. Uh, good morning, and a very warm welcome to. and even present on the call today uh dinan did introduce my team i also would like to add here that our uh, the sga our investor relation advisors are also on the call with us uh hope you all have received our investor presentation by now for those who have not you can view them on the stock exchanges and the company website During the first nine months of the financial year 24, uh, our publication business has faced various challenges due to external factors. This includes lower than anticipated uptake of general inventory, an unprecedented increase in the paper prices during the year, and a recent surge in the uh, surge in the resale of uh, second-hand books. attributed to no major change in curriculum for last 6 years now despite grappling with such challenging environment the company has remained steadfast and reported similar sales compared to the same period last year for the 9 months fy24 our consolidated revenue from operations grew by the only 2.2% which stood at 1316 crores as compared to 1288 crores Absolute EBITDA for nine months, FY24, stood at 209 crore, while EBITDA margin stood at 59.9%, and PET stood at 158 crores, while PET margin stood at 12%. Uh, I purposely gave you all the numbers of nine months just to repeat of my earlier speeches. Uh, quarter numbers are always challenging for the company to establish or to compare. year on year therefore i spoke about 9 months now coming to segment wise performances first i'll speak about publishing so during this 9 months of fy24 our publication business experienced a steady revenue uh, as i just mentioned various factors uh, that led to negative carry on our sales volumes but overall we could at least continue to remain at the same numbers so there are some reasons to this for the ssc state board publishing business uh, we are still awaiting curriculum change announcements from the state boards of maharashtra and gujarat and we are very sure that post which we anticipate better volumes growth additionally uh, for our cbse publishing business which has pan india presence the ongoing trend of students transitioning from private english medium schools that is ssc schools to cbse schools is expected to have a significant positive impact on our addressable market furthermore our strategy of completing <coughs> complementing our edtech business with our traditional publication business and offering products beyond conventional learning is gradually progressing not only in maharashtra and gujarat but at several places in the country including cbse schools 
it is expected to fuel an increased demand in our publication vertical in the coming years. We are also working towards simplifying our structure to enhance collaboration and offer comprehensive digital education solution, leveraging now needs uh, resources, which will help us save cost and drive growth for both print and digital products. Uh, our subsidiary, Indianica, which caters to CBSE market, we are confident in expanding our business by serving more schools and improving our products offering. Uh, as you are aware, for CBSC business, Q4 is the major quarter, so we expect better sales compared to the same period last year. So we, may, we did saw continuous losses in first three quarters, but that is the nature of business as far as Indianica is concerned. Coming to stationary business, uh, with rich brand equity over six decades, the company has established a strong presence in paper-based and modern non-paper stationary products uh, across India. The company's stationary brands like Uva and HQ have gained popularity in offering a diverse range of stationary products catering to a wide range of customer needs. We also see continuous demand for quality product as well as branded product in stationary markets across India for last one year or so. So for nine months FY24, domestic business grew by around 11% to 257 crore. Traditionally, Q4 and Q1 are the, our strongest quarters in domestic stationary market. However, in the third quarter revenue saw marginal growth which stood at 68 crore. We are committed to strengthening the foundation of our stationary business and are very optimistic that the domestic stationary business will continue to gain momentum and grow between 12 to 15 percent in FY24. Of course, the outlook and the demand that we see foresee going forward looks very, very positive. Now, on our exports of stationary business, uh, as you may know, that we export to 30 plus countries globally, having a strong presence mainly in the US. The company's largest Indian exporter of stationery to highly reputed retail chains like Walmart in the US. Company holds a positive outlook on this business, fueled by advantages of the China Plus One strategy and other in house initiatives of introducing new non paper products for our clients. As communicated earlier, one of our product category is currently being evaluated for potential anti-dumping duty in the US. We expect to service orders from this category in FY24 or 5 as necessary arrangements are already been made. A uh, little bit uh, on a slowdown, we are seeing early signs of slowdown in the US markets. And the main reason that we have realized is due to the supply chain constraints resulting in unprecedented increase in freight cost from India, which we believe to be a temporary phenomenon. Even with the U.S. slowdown for nine months FY24, our exports business just grew only by very marginally to 456 crores, while the third quarter revenue stood at 98 crores. So this was on the business now I request my CFO Kalpesh to give you the financial highlights. Please, over to you, Kalpesh. Kalpesh, sir, we are not able to hear you. Uh, thank you, Sunil Bhai, uh, and good morning to everyone. Uh, let me take you through uh, standalone performance first. Revenue for nine months financial year 24 stood at 1,299 crores as compared to 1,268 crores in the same period last year. Uh, revenue for Q3 FY24 stood at 253 crores as compared to 259 crores in the same period last year. Uh, EBITDA for nine months uh, financial year 24 stood at uh, 264 crores as compared to uh, 290 crores in the same period last year. 
Uh, EBITDA for the quarter uh, Q3 24 stood at uh, 25 crore as compared to 32 crores in the same period last year. Paid for nine, uh, paid for nine month uh, financial at 24 stood at uh, 199 crores as compared to 206 crore in the same period last year. And paid for Q3 stood at uh, 12 crore as compared to 24 crore in the same period last year. Now let me uh, take you through the consolidated performance. Uh, Revenue for financial year, uh, nine month financial year 24 uh, stood at 1,316 uh, crores as compared to 1,288 crores in the same period last year. And uh, revenue for Q3 uh, FY24 stood at 259 crores as compared to 264 crores in the same period last year. Uh, EBITDA for nine months uh, FY24 stood at uh, 209 crores as compared to 238 crores in the same period last year. And EBITDA for Q3, FY24 stood at 4 crore, as compared to 10 crore in the same period last year. Uh, PET for a 9 month, FY24 uh, stood at 158 crore, as compared to 181 crore in the same period last year. And uh, Q3, uh, FY24 registered a loss of 22 crore, as compared to the profit of 31 crore in the same period last year. Uh, thank you, and uh, now hand it over to Sunil Bhai uh, for uh, thank you. So I take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining the call. I hope we have been able to address uh, many queries. Could be, of course, after after Q and A. So before really I give my uh, closing remarks, I uh, I request everyone and the floor is open for Q and A now. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Deepan Shankara Narayanan from Trustline PMS. Please go ahead. Oh, good morning, everyone. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, so firstly, uh, in the publication business, so last quarter we have mentioned that uh, Gujarat examination books have been shifted to third quarter. So what was that amount uh, that has got transferred from previous quarters in publication business? Yeah, that was uh, 15 to 17 crore that got transferred from Q2 to Q3. Uh, yeah, that uh, th that was the number. Okay, okay. So adjusted for this, so we have seen, uh, so year on year, uh, there has been fall in uh, number. So what kind of volume uh, degrowth we have seen uh, during this quarter? And uh, uh, about the issue of... Uh, uh, students moving moving back to older older books uh, has that been addressed uh, uh, to arrest this volume degrowth? Yeah, so basically, as far as Q3 sales are concerned of publications, there we are not seeing any degrowth. But uh, unfortunately, we had more returns than expected uh, of the earlier quarters. Uh, and uh, we, in, frankly, how do we address the second-hand book market on our own? Uh, the only solution is that we continuously edit many of our products, uh, even though curriculum change is not happening. So uh, management is quite aware of this, and accordingly, for next academic year, we have revised several products. We have uh, uh, we may have removed certain. Uh, extra content that we otherwise were feeling to be given, but now market is not expecting. By that, we are trying to reduce the volume of the books also. So that, that way, lots of uh, revisions have done at our end for the next academic year. But in this particular year, the sales uh, actually did not grow, uh, even though there was spillover from Q2 to Q3, Main reason is the returns were uh, higher than expected. Okay, okay. 
So what what was that uh, kind of uh, volume degrowth we have seen uh, in Q3 and uh, nine months, and uh, also uh, do we foresee this continue till our new curriculum uh, uh, comes on stream? Uh, I may not be able to really comment very confidently on this, but yes, whatever management could decide and think that to avoid the usage of second hand books. uh lots of revision that was required even though curriculum is not changing has been taken it is uh, already been done so uh, <clears throat> for next year onwards we foresee that at least second hand book market will get curtailed but with respect to your question on how much degrowth in volume so around 10 to 12% degrowth that we have seen uh, in q uh, in a uh, uh, 9 months period Okay, okay, and also, could you please uh, provide some uh, visibility on the implementation of this new curriculum in uh, state board market, and what kind of growth uh, do we expect in uh, FI 25 and 26 in terms of revenues? So, as I made one remark, that uh, we are dependent on the curriculum change by the respective state governments as far as SSE business is concerned. i already mentioned in my remark that we are still awaiting that clarity from them uh, unfortunately for several reasons maybe at the government level they are not yet able to announce that change we know that curriculum revision has already or change curriculum activities have already started at the state government level but they are still not announcing that so depending on the announcement uh, uh, we will come to know uh for the standards or the grades that we know are likely to change we have kept our printing uh on hold for a while so that whenever the decision comes we can implement it immediately now with respect to growth that are expected in fy 25 or 26 again dependent on the decision of the state government but uh, just from mathematical point of view uh the percentage contribution of each grade uh, once we know which i have communicated several times earlier uh, that will help understand the growth volume whenever curriculum changes so uh, <coughs> mr sankara we can talk this offline later uh, on particularly grade wise contribution to navneet every year so and then we'll uh, you'll be able to understand uh, depending on which grades are being changing uh, the growth will come in the company okay okay sure that is helpful and lastly from my side uh, on the stationary export front uh, so as you have mentioned also in the commentary that uh, uh, this slow down in growth is visible so uh, so this is uh, particularly to the supply chain issues or uh, it can uh, again resume back in a couple of quarters uh, time the growth see this is as you we all know there is huge disturbance as far as movement of material from asia to the western world due to that red sea problem because of that freight costs have gone so drastically high no doubt we do not supply on uh, cif basis but finally customer would look at their landed cost and we, with that we are seeing slow down in demand from them at present and as i just mentioned we believe this this issue cannot remain for long so it is a temporary phenomenon okay thanks a lot and all the best i'll join back to Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. Next question is from the line of Himanshu Upadhyay from Google Rock PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning. And uh, I have a question on uh, the our CBSE business. Can you give an idea of how many more CBSE schools we would be catering to in FY24 versus FY23, and how is the penetration or number of prescribed books moved in last few years? 
secondly besides overall sales what are the parameters you are tracking closely for checking your progress on cbsc business some thoughts on this business yeah so your first question is how many more cbsc schools we would be catering this year so uh, in fy23 we were marketing around 8500 schools and that number has gone up to now 11000 schools uh, from the house of nawneet which includes our india nika subsidiary so that is the uh, growth that we have expanded rather geographically and tried creating awareness of our uh, cbsc products in those schools uh, it's not only the new cbsc schools opening but many english medium ssc schools are also converting to cbsc so that what numbers are increasing in every state uh, that is helping us to grow to more and more schools so but this year we would have touched almost 11000 schools for creating the awareness of our product what was your second question uh, himanshu so my second question was on the penetration or number of book prescribed books okay and how has that moved per school been so let's say 8500 schools uh, which you cater to last year how many books can be yeah so let me first clarify here we go we were going to 8500 schools in fy23 and 11000 this year not necessarily all schools prescribe our books so i was talking about the reach now as far as prescription is concerned out of 8500 around 5300 schools had prescribed one title to 10 titles of ours versus this year we are expecting which will come to know by march and that Uh, uh in relation to 5300 how many schools are prescribing but my team is very hopeful of uh going beyond 6500 schools as far as prescription is concerned or except by acceptance is concerned from them and uh, see uh, following on this only see uh, this 5300 schools where our books were prescribed from 1 to 10 uh, 1 to 8 or nursery to 8 i should say okay nursery to 8 and uh, titles you said 1 to 10 or you said uh, nursery to 8 uh, so classes uh, all all cbsc book publisher private publishers would have titles from nursery to 8th grade 9th and 10th grade each cbsc schools are compulsorily to use ncert published books because students have to appear for the board exam no i i agree so i'm saying how many titles uh, would they be using this 5300 or skus we would be catering and how that number would have moved in last 5 years because that tells us the depth of our relationship has moved in with our existing relatively group. relatively a uh, nomnit group is a uh, new in cbsc market so every year volumes are increasing but exactly how many volumes could we sell in 5300 schools that number will have to uh, it's not readily available with us right now on the call we can definitely uh, discuss offline on these numbers and uh, give you the overall growth for last 2 3 years and one thing besides just the sales numbers okay what are the parameters you are tracking closely okay for uh, checking your uh, progress on cbsc business and how many sales people would have increased to cater to cbsc business in last 3 years so we had 80 people now i'm t- talking at a group level i'm just not talking for navneet alone and indianica alone so mm. from 80 to we have moved to 170 people now we who are uh, daily visiting the schools uh, this is across india so that way we have grown the number of schools uh, number of people uh, to cater to this or create awareness of our products so now what are the parameters of course parameters would be first on the quality of a product 
uh, the features or couple of digital features that we give in the book, uh, which is of course run through QR codes. Uh, any other digital asset that we can give it to them. So all these are considered and finally, uh, what are the pricing that we offer to them? Uh, so these are the main criteria on which they decide on the uh, book while recommending. So my question was uh, the effectiveness of this 80 people to 170 people what we have moved. So what are the their K, KRAs, okay? And uh, what are the top three KRAs for them? One would be obviously to meet num more number of schools. But uh, getting conversion rates and again, how, what are uh, what so have you put the KRA? The first KRA is of course uh, the volume that they can get through the year uh, for company. That is the first KRA. Whether they go to more schools or they go to lo less schools, uh, as first criteria is getting the uh, total volumes uh, by an individual. Second KRA uh, <clears throat> thereafter is number of schools visited. So uh, these are the two main <clears throat> key criteria on which uh, we judge a person. Uh, of course, thereafter, uh, how many visits do they have to com compulsory, they have to make, go to school to get the or confirm orders. That is another one important KRA so that their effectiveness in convincing the school, uh, how fast is that that we try and measure. So these are basically primarily three KRAs that we often follow. And uh, I have few more, but just one question. See, we have seen uh, price of paper reduced uh, based on many other uh, companies or uh, what we see. Do you think the stationary margins uh, can start moving better from here on? And uh, any thoughts on that? And will it be, are you seeing, or you see the price of uh, fall in paper is being completely transferred to the end consumer, okay? In the market, what is happening, especially on domestic stationery? So think. in this year in particular, you would have seen fall in margin in our stationary products. Reason is we did not transfer all incremental costs, or I can say that we could not transfer all the costs. Uh, because of the higher, invent higher cost inventory that we used in the current year's production, uh, we saw a little dip in margin. But now going forward, as paper prices have come down, we hope that it does not really go up fast as it had happened in last year. So if that happens, then uh, we are very sure of improving in the margins. And for this year, we would have already purchased the prices of uh, paper for publications business, especially on the CBSE. So no and paper the... mill in the current scenario gives us a fixed price for a long period. Most of them have given us confirmed price for three months maximum. Uh, probably uh, the demand of paper, they also believe, will go up and therefore they are not able to give fixed pricing. But uh, till uh, as we speak, I would say that 70% of the paper would have already been procured and balance will be procured by April end. So more or less for the next academic year, we are not really much worried on the pricing. And how is the paper prices down versus last year? Means, uh... So they have gone down by 20% from the peak level uh, it had gone up by 30-35%, which has come back to 30, uh, 20-odd percentages. Few paper mills have again started uh, increasing prices by marginally by 5 to 7%. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, as we understand the market, for us, uh, in the next academic year, we are already quite taken care of. Okay, thank you. I'll join back in the queue for further queries. Sure. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Amit Ketan from Labyrinth Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good morning and thanks for taking my question. So, Galaji, uh, last, uh, last time you mentioned that uh, for the publication business, we expect curriculum changes for standards one and two. 
for FY25. Uh, now your current commentary suggests that even this is at risk of being delayed. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, so what would be our, let's assume that there is no curriculum changes announced for FY25 and this shifts to say FY26. Uh, what would be our growth outlook in the absence of any such changes for FY25? So growth outlook which you are expecting minimum 12 odd percent if curriculum was to change. If that does not change then we may fall back to a single figure, a single digit number. Uh, and the re <coughs> Why we are expecting growth, uh, even that single digit, uh, as, the, as I mentioned uh, during my earlier question, uh, answer to the earlier question, that we have ourselves revised lot many products, and uh, and therefore the usage of second-hand books should dis, uh, reduce, and with that con confidence we are saying that we'll be able to grow, even if curriculum d does not change. Got it, got it. And second question is on the export side. Is there any, uh, you know, figure you can share? I understand there's been some kind of a slowdown, but uh, uh, over the last three years, have we gained any kind of market share, say, in the U.S.? Uh, is there any figure that, uh, you know, gives us better number, color on this? So market share as a percentage, um, I really need US to uh, discuss. Sorry? Uh, say as a percentage of U.S. imports, uh, our share has increased. It will be it will be very very marginal because overall U.S. imports from India was hardly uh, between three and four uh, percent of their total stationary imports. So and rest was majorly from China. So as a percentage, I wouldn't be able to really comment because it will be again very fractional, but. Uh, I know the numbers that from <clears throat> we grew in last three years from around 400 crores to 550 crore. That much growth we could get. But uh, Amit, if you recall, I might have told this earlier, that whenever they give us the new products or higher production uh, or new customers also, they try with us for a year or so and then they ramp up their numbers. So they just don't blindly give us the higher order for in the first uh, first year itself. So that base has already been made, and therefore we believe going forward uh, we will definitely receive much larger orders. And accordingly, we are trying to build capacities uh, internally and expanding uh, and making investments also. Understood. And lastly, on 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 the export side, uh, uh, my sense is most of your clients would have finalized budgets for uh, calendar year 24. Uh, what is the uh, kind of uh, you know growth or outlook you're sensing for, uh, you know from their orders? So as we have received uh, orders, but without confirmation on delivery period, uh, we uh, see the number that we have received is very attractive, but on delivery. And they have consciously said this time that till the time this issue is settled, of particularly freight, uh, they will not confirm the final delivery. So even we have not procured paper for that. Uh, we are just on daily basis uh, it is happening. Uh, so at, uh, as far as the uh, tentative numbers that have come to us, those are very encouraging. But finally, this will, uh, this decision on day to day is uh, they are making uh, how much quantity finally they, they should uh, agree to buy from India. So we will need a couple of weeks to establish that now. Got it. Got it. Uh, great. Uh, thanks a lot and all the best. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Payal Shah from Billion Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first is, as, uh, as we have communicated earlier, uh, one of our product categories is currently being evaluated for potential uh, anti-dumping duty in the USA. So uh, what steps we have taken for the same, if you can please elaborate? <coughs> so we have... Uh, arranged to get it manufactured in neighboring country uh, and that way we will be able to 
receive back this volume back in the year FY25. Uh, okay, sir, and following up to that, can you please quantify what amount of loss are we expecting? No, so I have already communicated in my last speech that because of this loss of order, which is seasonal in nature, which was to the tune of around 40 odd crore, which we could not get, that will come back in the next year. Okay. And my next question is, uh, why are our, why uh, is our raw material inventory days has gone up as compared to nine months FI23? Any reasons behind that? So, uh, paper has been very, very volatile. And at times when we feel that uh, paper is likely to rise again, we do little more inventory. And the other reason, uh, <clears throat> which is clearly evident, is the volumes that we were expecting in the current year to increase did not happen and therefore which are reflected in numbers also and because of that we do have little higher inventory in the current year but all inventories will be used only loss to us is the carrying cost uh, okay so that's quite helpful thank you so much for answering the question thank you thanks bye thank you Next question is from the line of Mohammad Patel from Care Portfolio Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. My first question is, when do we start seeing the impact of reduction of losses in the now niche future tech business? Reduction of loss is already seen in the current year compared if we compare it with last year. And whatever additional losses that we were incurring, which we incurred rather, in first two quarters, our as on date has become zero, and therefore from next year you will see reduction in that number, and we simultaneously you will see increase in revenue also. So that will have a better impact on the reduction of losses. Can you quantify the number? Yeah. So I had mentioned that in the uh, tech activities. This year, we will end up losing around 45 crore compared to 60 odd crore that we lost last year. And that 45 crore will come down to around 30 odd crore in FY25. Okay, okay. My second question is, in the Indianica business, the losses have increased uh, over last year. So that, does that mean that we are spending more in the marketing and hence we should expect very good Q4, which is the largest? It's not only the market, uh, the cost that we were incurring, but like uh, <clears throat> uh, our SSE business, even their returns were a little higher than expected, and therefore we could not achieve whatever revenue in nine months that we had achieved earlier year. We could not achieve that, and because of that, losses we are seeing a little higher. But uh, <clears throat> As I uh, answered in my previous question, that we have increased not only the number of team members or the foothold, uh, we have increased number of schools. So on daily basis, we are getting good orders for uh, to be supplied by Q4. Uh, and therefore, we believe uh, all these losses that we have seen in nine months uh, will turn positive at the end of the year. Okay. Okay, my last question is, so the rise, the sharp rise in the usage of second and books that we have seen in this year, so majorly two factors, price hikes and uh, no syllabus change for many years. So which factor would have dominated amongst these two? Price rise. Uh, the price rise. price rise. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. Next question is from the line of Pooja Mehta from JC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Hi. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. Uh, how much our exports will be impacted due to this red sea issue going on? And uh, secondly, can you please throw some light on demand for the international business? Like, are we seeing the export business for financial enterprise? Like how are we seeing that? So, Pooja, a little difficult question for me to answer that how much will we get impacted. 
uh, we are still in the month of February and normally our customers end up confirming orders between January and March. So we are still awaiting final response from them uh, based on which we will come to know uh, what all uh, numbers that are getting impacted. But having said that, uh, we have already started pro uh, producing different stationary, other stationary products where freight as a cost to the total imports is not really very marginal. Uh, it's marginal, and that way we will try and achieve the uh, similar or higher numbers than what we will do in 24. But uh, very difficult to quantify right now the impact because of this Red Sea problem right now. As on today, I'll, as I said, I'll need a couple of weeks to establish that. What was your other question, Pooja? Uh, hello? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so, so can you throw some light on the demand for the international business? Yes. How are we seeing the export business for financial at 25? So, uh, demand-wise, uh, as I just mentioned earlier, that the uh, the expected number that they are asking is very attractive for us to deliver if this uh, Red Sea issue had not happened. So that way, demand is very high, and the demand is not additional demand in their respective country or customers, but it is because they want to shift their imports from one country to another, and therefore India being favored country now, uh, demand has is uh, look it looks very very positive and so as we are seeing that only finally as i said the customer will have to look at their final uh, cost to their destination where this freight is uh, has come as a new animal and disturbing factor okay got it sir that was helpful thank you thank you a reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Kritika Vaspute from Tata PMS. Please go ahead. Yes, thanks for the opportunity and please pardon the ignorance. Uh, you know, I'm new to the company. Uh, so just un wanted to understand if so you are expecting any impact for the coming year. Uh, because I would be assuming that uh, if the NEP is to come, does it? try to, you know, restock in a way? Yeah, if, uh, so, let, let, of course, NEP implementation is a very, very wide issue or wide topic for the state and the center to get that implemented. I'm not saying NEP has not been implemented even in the state of Maharashtra, Gujarat. In some way, it has already been implemented. For a company like ours, what matters is the curriculum change. Unfortunately, that curriculum change that was uh, uh, informed to the trade or the schools earlier that it will start getting changed from FY25, official announcement has not yet come out from both the states, and uh, we are still awaiting that. Uh, and if, But if that does not come, uh, uh, the expectation of change uh, the change curriculum benefit that we were to have that expectation will have to mile down okay so got it and by fy25 uh, you mean curriculum year starting fy24 june of 24 or is it the year that's right that's right that's right yes and that that gives us an impact in our financial for fy25 yes uh, but wouldn't, uh, wouldn't it be the case that for FY25, that is the curriculum year 24-25, the sales would happen in Q4 of FY24? No, no. So particularly when this I am talking about the curriculum of Maharashtra and Gujarat, SSE curriculum, where school starts from the month of uh, June every year, and the books are being bought by the students and the schools in the first quarter of uh, the academic year, that is in June quarter of 24, 25, they will start buying. So it's unlike CBSE where major sales happen in Q4. 
of earlier year because most of the schools in the country starts from 1st April. Uh, so there is little difference of academic years between CBSC and SSC. Okay, sir, understood. Thank, thanks for the clarification. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Neeraj Mansinka from White Pine Investment Manager. Please go ahead. Garabai, uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> Only one uh, question. You said that order receipts from the U.S. are good. Can you give some color that uh, how if you have to, uh, how much be a potential order if you have to execute in a year or a potential order you have to execute in two years? Any color in that will be very useful. So clearly in percentage-wise, of course, it depends from category to category, but purely from percentage point of view, the expected new orders uh, is between 15 to 17 percent higher than what we had in FY24. And beyond that, of course, we were, could have got, but we also have to look at our internal capacities. So these are the orders that we have indicatively have got from them. Okay. So in the last time also, to, uh, almost a year back, you have been, had been giving a guidance of 25% growth in the stationary side. Um, what has changed? Like, I know the, there has been a duty or on one of the products which contributed a large number, but once that drop-down has happened, the growth should also uh, stay at a higher number. Huh? So I just wanted to know, has your customers become more cautious or uh, just wanted to know some color on why the growth expected is lower than what you had expected a year back? No, so uh, let me clarify. Uh, this, of course, I recall having given this number, but for our domestic stationery, not for export stationery. Export stationery, I have always maintained between 14 to 15% growth. Now, <clears throat> that 14 to 15% growth also, we are not uh, achieving this year for the reason that I mentioned, one of the big category which... Uh, is under <clears throat> investigation for anti-dumping that we did not receive. So almost 8 to 9% of our uh, total volume we lost this year. That is the one of the main reasons. And secondly, uh, overall fluctuation of paper prices during the year also uh, restricted us to finally confirm uh, higher volumes with our customers. Uh, we actually did not want it to then uh, at times, if you would have bought at a higher price, uh, customers were not ready to revisit on the price that was fixed. So these were the unprecedented things that happened during the year, and oh. that was, uh, we could not. And as far as domestic stationery is concerned, uh, only one reason, which is the price fluctuation during the year, that uh, made us reduce from uh, expectation of 25% to now more or less 14-15% during the year. So do you expect the uh, domestic to pick up? Because the price impact has been to almost all the players. So is it like people are downgrading and using uh, lesser value, for, uh, lesser quality products? For, uh, uh, can any more no, color on no. the domestic? Yeah, of course, we do talk to our competitors also on a regular basis. And finally, price rise was so high that everyone felt that if we try to pass that on to the end consumer, uh, it will be a big challenge to uh, all the industry players. And prices uh, has to come down. And therefore, most of the players have taken hit on their margins and uh, have at least focused on their top line. Uh, thinking that in long term that will help. So it is not only with Naunit but with all the competitors that we have. I am talking about organized players. Uh, unorganized players, of course, every time they change prices uh, depending on the months. So we, I am not comparing it with them. Right. So is it that the unorganized players have increased the share during this uh, high paper prices period? Uh, Probably very, very base products, particularly notebook type of a product, they might have succeeded, uh, particularly in two-tier, three-tier cities, uh, where also we were selling. But simultaneously, 
Uh, so that, uh, yeah, to answer your question, yes, they might have increased their share because of this. But simultaneously, uh, yeah. most of our uh, organized players, uh, we are trying to bring up better and better quality products, uh, high value added products. So that is also gaining momentum. But uh, for it to get really very big jump, uh, may take a couple of quarters. It, it can't happen suddenly. So that way, even though this challenge was there, we will be, uh, by the year end, we should grow between 14 15%. And, and sir, last question. On the FI25, on, on the stationary side, can you retrade the, the, the revenue expectation growth on domestic and export? So domestic, again, we are confident to grow by around 20%. Uh, on exports, I will not be able to comment because of this unprecedented uh, issue that has just cropped up. So mm -hmm. I will not be able to give you any view on exports. But uh, we st strongly believe this issue is temporary, and therefore, uh, and if it does not remain for long, we'll definitely see double-digit growth. Okay. And uh, sorry, I'm taking your time more. On the new products that you said that the companies take two, three years to uh, watch you and then scale that up. So any any thoughts on that? Like how you, you see that scale up happening? Because uh, and is your order that is coming in, in, in uh, including those orders or is it yet um, to show those scale up for those new products that you have? We have introduced a lot many products in the current year. And it means the base is already created, awareness among the, student, the user community is already created. So we are likely to see good ramp up uh, in the near, uh, near future, uh, it means in FY25, in domestic. As far as exports are concerned, of course, we are simultaneously develop, developing various different categories also made out of paper and plastic. So. All those samples have already gone to the customers. They are evaluating. But final decision will be their end cost, end delivered cost, depending on which they will uh, give us the orders. But as far as domestic is concerned, we are very, very confident that uh, with introduction of new and new products every uh, quarter or every month, uh, we have been able to establish our strong brand uh, in all the uh, key markets of India, and that we will see the benefit in, in a couple of quarters. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Janesh Joshi from Prabhudas Leelathar Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh in the opening commentary, uh, you mentioned that uh, the publishing division faced a decline because of uh, higher than expected sales return, uh, despite a spillover of about uh, 15 to 17 crores due to change in paper pattern in Gujarat board. So, can you share uh, what was the return number, the sales return number in this quarter versus our expectation? That is one. And a related follow-up is that now we have seen sales return being higher than our expectations for two quarters in a row. So does this uh, essentially revise our provisioning number for the next financial year? And also traditionally, how, how much proportion of our sales uh, comes back as, as a return to us, if you can uh, give a rough indication in terms of uh, percentage? So of the total uh, uh, sales that we do, uh, which is around 700 crore for the state of Maharashtra, Gujarat, uh, and India, Nika, 750 odd crore. So of 750 crore, uh, one minute, huh? 400. So normally around between uh, as per our past experience, between 80 to 90 crore worth of goods come back, and the net revenue is 750 post returns. That 80 to 90 crore this year would have gone to almost 
115 to 120 crore overall returns and that has impacted now th these are all unprecedented so we have been providing in our books as per past uh, experiences and past years uh, actuals but this year in particular because of the factors i mentioned we did receive higher returns and this is little unprecedented which is not the case every year but now whatever numbers are there uh, auditors have clearly told us that we, they will from next year they will uh, make little higher provision uh, <clears throat> and see for thereafter sure uh, for this quarter explicitly can you share the number what is our expectation so our expectation was 10 crores of return versus that we have received around 18 odd crores. Got that. And sir, uh, secondly, uh, I mean, uh, you did highlight that uh, for FY25, uh, the syllabus change schedule has not been communicated to you as yet. Uh, but but given the fact that uh, the NEP got announced uh, uh, a while back and especially for uh, the CBSC market that is uh, already under implementation. So any idea why is it taking a bit longer for implementation with respect to uh, state boards, so to say? The only reason that I can see is less attention by respective state governments on education. Uh, one more thing that what we are realizing while doing various teacher training programs that implementing NEP in totality is so difficult and challenging for uh, the schools and <clears throat> therefore the teachers. So government may be rather trying, still trying to establish a base that what all changes will be required to be done in imparting education. I think that focus is more on uh, stabilizing or explaining to the schools and the teachers what all is expected and therefore they may not be wanting to over give an overhang of additional curriculum change also to the schools uh, that we believe could be the reason but otherwise it has uh, as you rightly said in CBSC the impl <coughs> implementation is on uh, is in line with that decision. But unfortunately, state governments are not able to. It's not Maharashtra, Gujarat. Most of the states have, def uh, have not yet announced when are they going to uh, decide on curriculum change. Uh, uh, we, know that, we know that the content is already ready with them, but they are not announcing that or implementing that. Got that, got that. But sir, I mean, X of NEP2, every year, uh, there are certain standards which undergo a syllabus change. Uh, yeah, why, yeah. why is that not being followed? Because if I recollect properly, even in FY24, we hardly had any uh, standards due for syllabus we change. And not, yeah, we did not have any. And even in 25, so what is what is the reason for the state board, X of NEP2 not implement the, the, the routine syllabus change schedule? NEP, I can understand the reasons you highlighted, but then X of that, why is it not happening? I tried explaining that, that NEP is a very, very wide subject. It's not only the uh, classroom teaching, but there are so many other activities that schools will have to follow implementing. So probably the focus of the respective state government is to uh, at least make every school understand that what are the changes that are required to be done in overall school management. Their focus seems to be there and therefore they don't want to additionally dump the burden of curriculum change, which also is very, very different curriculum than what was there in the states earlier. So that could be the reason we believe that they are not able to announce. Sure, sir. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Madhur Rati from Counter Cyclical Investments. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Sir, you have guided on what like various scenarios and which are margins 
uh, in which our revenue could affect. Sir, could you just highlight on the margins because the retail will be procuring 70% of our paper. So what kind of margins can we expect next year, FY25? So FY25, as far as our publishing business is concerned, we are again very confident that this year, because of the higher paper input cost, we could not really pass. Ah, uh, higher input cost of paper versus today's paper price. Uh, so we had to keep all pri MRP or pricing based on current paper prices, whereas our invest, uh, our buying pattern was little earlier at a higher cost, and therefore we saw deep in margin. So. Now that if paper prices stabilize, uh, we believe uh, to attain back to the original margins should not be an issue. Uh, this is as far as gross margins are concerned. Now, with respect to EBIT level margins, uh, all depends on the growth simultaneously that we achieve because our fixed costs are definitely increasing year after year. So we will have to see to it that we at least uh, grow to the extent of fixed cost increase which are taken care of. So that, that, that much growth, if we have, then definitely a bit margins will be will come back to what it was. Uh, okay. Answer on the stationary side. Stationary side, again, similarly, uh, with respect to domestic, same issue had come uh, of uh, fluctuation of paper prices. So that number also should come back to what it was in FY25. And on domestic front, if we finally end up getting ah, the, the same volumes as expected or as uh, indicatively given to us, then their margins should improve by around a percentage or so. Okay. And just a final question on these exports that uh, around 15 to 70 percent higher order that we can get. So will this be margin accretive as well as what kind of margins can we expect from the segment as a whole? Segment, you mean to say stationary segment? Yes, sir, the export stationary uh, segment means. So uh, I would say in, uh, independently uh, trying to understand stationary segment, but Glenn will be always challenging because there are so many common things happening between domestic and exports. So at a blended level, <clears throat> what we were showing earlier, 12 to 13 percent, that, that we should be able to achieve. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that was the last question of the day. I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Yeah, so I take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining the call. Uh, I hope we have been able to answer most of your queries uh, that you had. Uh, but if you still have more queries or for the information, kindly get in touch with us or our uh, strategic growth advisor, our investor relation advisors. Uh, we'll try and uh, answer all of them in going forward. Thank you very much. And thanks, Jinan and Prabhudas Leelada, uh, for arranging this call. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. On behalf of Prabhudas Leelada Private Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may not disconnect your line.